that mean? Not Gordon or Bane. I'm a direct relative of Little Wayne. I've got a tool belt like Tim the Tool Man Taylor. Your babies are- <laughs> show has broken me man <laughs> what was the what was the we gotta think of we gotta think of raps for batman to say oh uh, i got a tool belt like tim the tool man taylor i'm sweating so much this <laughs> this, this this series has broken me emotionally oh. and physically oh oh i fainted i fainted no one will ever know our suffering. People can witness it, but they will never understand. <laughs> so, last year, I made a bit of a promise to you guys that I'm kind of breaking right now. I told you guys that if we made it to 400,000 subscribers, that I would start off 2021 with a video about iCarly. And we actually hit that goal, and far quicker than I really expected us to. And so, back in January, I sat down and started officially working to get that done. And it's been quite a while since then, and I can easily say that I have well over an hour's worth of material ready to present to you guys. However, I'm not even sure if that's going to be a quarter of the final project, and I just need more time to make sure everything is ready before I can get that out. And so instead of waiting until May or June to post a new video, I thought it would be more fun to start off 2021 with a bunch of smaller things that I originally intended to do last year, but I couldn't find time for. I just hope that my fans understand why this is taking so long, and that newer viewers will consider going down and hitting subscribe. My favorite thing to do whenever I have a brief lull in my schedule is to analyze YouTube channels I've discovered, which I find to be a bit curious curious or mysterious. And what this tends to occasionally bring us back around to is the topic of YouTube channels which have gone dead or silent and the question of why. And if there's any channel that seems worthy of a post-mortem re-examination, it's anime. Anime was a YouTube channel which began posting content in early 2012. Brought together by a small group of animators and a few main writers, the concept behind the show was that it featured memes which were animated. Thus, Anna meme. Now, what's immediately alluring about these videos, at least to me, is they don't generate an internal value in real time. The value was generated culturally, and anime simply fed off of that. Thus, when we revisit these videos years later, we discover both a curious time capsule of dated in-jokes and also a completely empty vessel which can feel somewhat meaningless if not approached with a very precise context. Now, I first found anime right before the pandemic started, and immediately there was one thing that stood out to me, and it's something that's really haunted me ever since. If you go to anime right now and you click on the homepage, you will discover that it is hardly a rock throws away from one million subscribers. Here's why this matters. To me, a million subscribers has always been the final stretch to the YouTube finish line. None of us are going to be able to do this forever. None of us are guaranteed everlasting success. But if you hit a million, even if you die off, even if you fall from grace, you will have concrete evidence that you had an impact. You did something worthwhile. It's like the victory screen after the final boss. You can keep playing but you basically won. And I don't know, I just find something so tragic about a dead channel sitting here a moments away from the ultimate YouTube goal, like a broken clock stammering in the same instant forever. And so today, I want to discuss that tragedy and how we got to this moment. Now, before we get too far into this, I just want to clarify that I hold no ill will towards anyone involved with anime. I feel like videos like this, and even earlier episodes of Fallen Titans, can make the mistake of conflating a person being bad and a person's content being bad, as if one being true makes the other true as well. And that's simply not the case. 
Sometimes good people make bad content, and sometimes bad people make good content. And so I want to make sure you guys won't go out and harass these creators just because I covered them. Additionally, if I say anything about anime that you disagree with as an anime fan, I just want to say that's okay. I think it's good that people have different opinions, and I want to encourage a healthy debate. Uh, anyways, here's that cartoon intro you've been waiting for. Fallen Titans is proudly powered by two things, my heightening addiction to caffeine and today's sponsor, NordVPN. You know, as things are coming along and that vaccine is getting easier and easier to get, it seems pretty realistic to imagine that this international pandemic might be coming to an end soon. And if you're anything like me, the moment it's safe, you're going to be traveling and hitting up every coffee shop you've missed out on in the last 13 months. However, it can be easy to forget exactly how sensitive situations like that really are. Connecting yourself to a public server, even at a place like McDonald's or Starbucks, leaves you vulnerable to attack from any other person who happens to be connected to that same network. There have literally been YouTubers who have connected to a random Wi-Fi hotspot only to have their passwords stolen and their channels deleted. It's a very dangerous thing that we do all the time without thinking about it, really. And that is why I recommend NordVPN for security, business, and pleasure. NordVPN operates by hosting over 5,000 proxy servers in 59 countries all over the globe, or the flat earth, whatever floats your boat. By using this service, you can essentially hide your computer's IP address and location, making it nigh impossible for hackers anywhere to access your sensitive data, and also making it possible for you to access international content. You want to watch something that's only on Netflix Canada? Well, guess what? But you click on Canada, wait a moment, and boom, you can access all of that sweet maple goodness. You stay safe, you save money, and you can use your Nord account on up to six devices. What else could you ask for? I encourage you guys to go out and try this right now. NordVPN actually has a free 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can get the service, try it out for those days, and if you don't like it, you can just return it and get your money back with no strings attached. So do yourself a favor and give it a chance during that time window. Once again, you will find all of that at nordvpn.com slash q-u-i-n-t-o-n. Anyways, let's get into this. To talk about anime, we first have to tackle another hefty topic, that being Yo Mama. Yo Mama is probably a phenomenon that many of you have come across, but I was actually shocked to discover just how long it's been going on. The first Yo Mama video was posted in July 2011, meaning that the show is basically 10 years old. And in that 10 years, in terms of style, voice acting, and animation, not much has really changed. The phenomenon of Yo Mama might seem a little perplexing at first, but I think I have the perfect way of explaining. It. Have you ever seen those YouTube channels that just re-upload Family Guy clips? You know, the ones where the title and thumbnail are based around some weird moment in an episode you never saw, so you think, well, well what the hell is this? So you click on it, but it turns out the video is actually like a long string of Family Guy moments, edited in a weirdly specific way to get around copyright, and when you finally get to the moment that the thumbnail teased, it's not even really accurate to what you were shown in the preview material. Yo mama is that. Yo Mama is a bizarre, corrupted copy of Family Guy, where it's all cutaway jokes and no setup. Yo Mama is a fascinating channel because it's existed so long that just scrolling through the homepage gives you sort of a brief glimpse into the very history of YouTube itself being reflected back at you. For instance, when they first started uploading material, each one of their videos was typically about 30 seconds long. These videos would tell one joke, and they would get to the point right away, and they were very, very popular. However, shorter content on YouTube kind of doesn't really do well anymore, so eventually they started uploading videos which were typically collages of their own previous material, with new stuff occasionally added into the mix. Another example is how they've evolved in their direct targeting of their audience. 
Yo Mama used to have a recurring series called Yo Mama Jokes for Kids, which was based on the blatantly true fact that children are probably the main audience for the channel. However, in January 2020, YouTube was forced to change their rules so that material explicitly made for kids would be placed into a unique category of content which would make less money and thus be pushed less hard by the algorithm. And ever since then, Yo Mama has been trying very, very hard to make sure that their content cannot be labeled as made for kids. One of the many ways that they've accomplished this is the occasional insertion of a running joke of characters twerking with their assholes pointed towards the camera. The Chuggers. The Chuggers. The Chuggers. I could talk about Yo Mama all day, but I very much do not want to. Now, when this channel first launched, it was primarily a collaboration between two people, Alex Negrete and Zach James. After finding success with the project, they decided to start their own animation studio, which they called Animeme Studios. That name was not random, as the very same year that they kickstarted that, they also began a second YouTube project that would be produced alongside Yo Mama, and that channel's name was obviously Animeme. When you take a first glance at the earliest Animeme videos uploaded, the concept comes across as almost brilliantly simplistic. You see, most Yo Mama videos make use of reusable animation rigs which can be recycled for numerous jokes if the writing permits it. It's smart to thus keep rigs on hand of any characters you might find yourself wanting to use, be that a character like Brody Fox or someone like the President of the United States. It's similar to how South Park can turn an episode around in a week because, well, they've been doing this for over two decades. It doesn't take a sweatshop to illustrate Cartman doing something funny. So the idea behind Animeme is they would find memes with simplistic formats and characters, they would build very simple rigs of those characters, and then they would animate longer formatted videos without nearly as much work that would come with redrawing every single frame. Oh, you hate drama? Please keep dramatically complaining about it. Now, I'm not saying that doing animation this way is easy, because it actually can be very hard, but what it certainly is, is realistic. And on a site like YouTube, where competition is high and you have to constantly adapt to survive, finding content that is realistic is extremely important. So let's stop now and look back at some of the most essential 2012 meme cast members that Animeme elected to bring to life. Well, there was Overly Attached Girlfriend, for starters. She was a girlfriend who was overly attached to her boyfriend to the extent of it becoming somewhat stalkerish. It took you 10 minutes to get home? Google Maps says it takes eight. Who is she? Then you got Velociraptor, a dinosaur who comes up with clever solutions and puns. If a redhead works at a bakery, does that make him a ginger? Bread man. And finally, we have Pedo Bear. Pedo Bear was a bear who had sex with children. He was unjustifiably popular to the extent of being one of the most recognizable memes of the time. I understood who Pedo Bear was before I understood what Stranger Danger was. But the point is that you can kind of understand what a lot of memes were like at the time based off of these few examples. Static images rarely changing in appearance, with the only true customization being the top and bottom text, with slight variations of the same setup and punchline every single time. But simply adding mouth flaps to JPEGs wasn't enough for anime, at least creatively it seems. So on occasion, the channel would produce more high-effort, short-form content just to experiment with what people were willing to watch. Typically, their approach with these would be to combine two internet things and just see what happens. For instance, Slenderman meets Honey Boo Boo, Psybeam, aka Pokemon Gundam Style, and of course, 
Slender Man vs. Pedo Bear, an animated skit about what it would be like if those two characters were in a Pokemon battle. Pedo Bear, now's our chance! Pedo, 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 Pedo Bear, what are you Beto, doing? Beto, Come on! Beto, 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 He's getting closer! Beto, Beto. And it seems like it was material like this that really captivated the imaginations of people working on the channel. Well, not really. In truth, it probably captured the imagination of Alex Negrete, one of the two co-founders who we talked about earlier. The point is that Alex had an idea of where to take Animeme, and one year into its history, it would upload what was, without a doubt, its most high-effort product to date. Grumpy Cat vs. Nyan Cat the first Animeme rap battle, which today has over 13 million views. Running at two and a half minutes and consisting of original music, voice acting, and non-recycled, high-quality animation, the channel really went from low-effort clips of Rage Comics characters twitching to something that was trying to compete with the likes of epic rap battles of history. Now, I found this video several years after it came out, and the moment I did, I knew it had promise. Because to me, Young Cat and Grumpy Cat are two of the most timeless memes to ever exist. I love Nyong Cat. I still have Nyong Cat as my YouTube cursor bar, and Tartar Sauce is no longer with us, but she is fondly remembered. And they had some star power with this rap battle, bringing on as a guest voice YouTube sketch comedian Shane Goddammit to Hell! I knew they'd find some way to ruin this. So yeah, Shane Dawson plays Nyong Cat in this. And like with a lot of fan-made rap battle material, the characterization is amazingly generic and has nothing to do with the source material. You see, the problem with memes, or at least memes from a decade ago, is they don't have personalities, per se? They're just looping caricatures meant to portray a certain feeling or emotion to the audience. To me, Nyan Cat is not a boy or a girl, they're not moody or bitchy, they're just a Pop-Tart cat floating in space with no mission or goal and just a seemingly endless appreciation for the feeling of being alive. And up to this point, Animeme's main output has been taking memes and upscaling them, basically. This is the first time that we've ever really seen them have to deal with adapting source material, and some of the choices that they make with these characters are perplexing, to say the least. You're shorter than the pinky of Peter Dinklage. Scratch that more like Dinklage's Peter. Going through shrinkage. You're still a virgin. My penis cost a big bang. Roses are red, violets are blue. I have a gun. Get in the van. I have a gun. Get in the van. Truly the first thing I thought of when I saw this. But if this video shows cracks, it also shows equal promise in a series that very easily could have been great. Whenever Grumpy Cat takes the mic, I actually do find myself getting a little into it, and the charm of the concept starts to shine through. You ain't shit, you ain't shit, you're 8-bit Atari. Just quit, you won't get these 8 tits, I'm sorry. Cause the only reason you got to be that tasty is your dad couldn't get pussy, so he sexed a pastry. Ah, but there's the eternal question, Animeme. Did a cat fuck a pastry? Or did a pasty guy fuck a cat? The Animeme rap battles were produced, at least in Season 1, with two main sponsors, Nerdist and Official Comedy, two nerdy comedy YouTube channels of the time. These rap battles were very expensive to turn around, so it seems like the agreement they had come to was that Nerdist and Official Comedy would help fund the animation, and in return, certain episodes of the series would be posted on those two channels. So on the exact same day that Nyan Cat vs. Grumpy Cat dropped on the Animeme channel, two other rap battles dropped on the Nerdist channel. One featured Forever Alone and Overly Obsessed Girlfriend, and the other The Most Interesting Man and Old Spice. Now the latter video has Tay Zonde, which means I have absolutely nothing bad to say about it, but the first video represents a, a lot of those weird anime rap battle character choices that we talked about before. 
For the first minute or so, it all seems fine. Forever Alone is rapping about how being alone isn't all that bad, you know, stuff that fits his character. But then Forever Alone announces that he's only doing the rap because he's in love with Overly Obsessed Girlfriend, and she spends the rest of the rap harshly turning him down, which means that they literally took her characteristics and gave them to him, and then she just didn't get any unique characteristics. She's just a generic rap protagonist. Tell our grandchildren stories as you suck up my lever Cause if you're a stick, I'm a stick, let's start a fire Put my condoms in the freezer so they never expire This is Star Wars, you're forever a drone, Starbucks, forever a scone What I'm saying is you're forever unknown, now go to your chateau and die alone Ooh. Later that same month, back on the Animeme channel, they were finally able to release one of the most anticipated rap battles of the bunch Insanity Wolf versus Courage Wolf. Who are those guys? Yeah, so this episode represents a pretty big issue with this series in that not all of the memes they chose to bring to life have been totally timeless, and quite a few of them are completely and utterly irrelevant today. When I was watching through all of these with my friend Hippie Rat for the first time, I legit had to stop a few times just to Google the memes and the battles, because I had absolutely no idea what was going on before I did that. So from what I can gather, Insanity Wolf and Courage Wolf are both impact font memes who are the same. They're basically the same. One is a wolf that's really intense, and the other one is a, is a wolf that's really intense. I'm, I'm, I know there's some greater nuance to exactly how you set up the, the delivery of those jokes, but I mean, this rap battle spends most of the runtime just trying to convince you that these two characters are different in any conceivable way. When life gave me lemons, I fucked it in the ass and gave it lemonade! I gave you lemons and a new guy! But once again, Animeme was proving that they had star material because this video features the guest voice of YouTube sketch comedian Toby to Oh My God. And the scenic rap through mono, walking through the front door, so much current I do the worm with the boat. Even Jacob from White I could kick your ass. Fuck off! The beat is just a suggestion. The beat is just a suggestion in this. So there were originally six episodes of season one of Animeme spread across these three channels, and I think the main thing you need to know about these is that they were massive hits. Quite a few of them have since broken 10 million views, or at the very least are getting very close. And for a relatively new animation channel, that is a fantastic boundary to break. And re-watching through all of these, you kind of do get the appeal. They're flashy, they look unique, and they feature a lot of quirky jokes that feel very at home in a 2013 project. Shove these cufflinks in your eyes, gag you with my gum, so nobody will hear your cries. Break to eat McDonald's fries. And so it seemed at the time that there had to be more coming with this series. And after those six episodes dropped, there was just... Radio silence. For three years, there was no new rap battle material featured on Animeme. And eventually, they got so caught up with the production of these battle videos that they stopped making those filler meme videos that we talked about earlier. And for two years, the Animeme channel uploaded almost nothing. In June 2015, they uploaded a trailer for Season 2 of The Rat Battles. The first episode of that same series would not premiere until June 2016, one year later. And when that content finally started to come out, it proved to be something honestly, truly embarrassing. You see... In between early 2013 and mid-2016, the internet had changed in a lot of ways. Some good, and some bad. It was a lot more complex, but a lot less innocent. But the main way things had changed was meme culture. Memes in 2016 no longer had a top text and a bottom text. There was no consistent meme lore across the entire internet. And most importantly, a topical meme could be gone in an instant. 
Jokes that were funny in January were probably not going to be funny in March, and it truly became very difficult to pinpoint which memes were going to become timeless. And of course, as things continued along that path, memes eventually collapsed into a sort of meta black hole, and we got things like the e-meme for a while, but that's a whole other story. Here's why all of this is notable. By all accounts, the second season of the Animeme Rap Battles had been in production from the moment season one was a hit. This is actually really obvious when you watch the videos, because occasionally they will reference 2013 and 2014 as the current years. So fans of memes went into this series expecting Harambe, Dat Boy, Pepe, and they were instead delivered material which was stale to say the least. Now, it seems like the people making this show anticipated that this was going to be a problem, although certainly not to the extent that they should have, but their solution was perplexing. You see, the answer that Animeme came up with was to not put memes into their meme rap battle series. There are two characters in this series who I would say really qualify as memes. Uh, Insanity Wolf, who is an impact font meme that no one remembers, and Doge. Not the modern Doge, mind you, but the 2013 Comic Sans Doge. Every other character, just flat out, isn't a meme. I mean, you got Mario Brothers vs. Frozen Sisters, Mike and Sully vs. Rocket and Groot, Kanye vs. Keanu, they put the Lego Movie characters into this, Batman and Iron Man have a fight, Hello Kitty shows up, and it's just... lame. Now I'll throw! Like, it's really lame. Well, you mad, bro? Let it go! And I feel bad for saying that, because I know that this is a passion project that someone spent three years of their life working on, but oh, it's so lame, and it's embarrassing, and I want to share just how lame it is with you guys. To understand what I mean, let's get into my favorite anime video of all time. Pokemon versus... My Little Pony. Now this video starts off sane. Ash and some pony are one-on-one, -on -one, they exchange some insults, but then every few seconds they change which characters are in the fight, and you completely lose track of what is going on. You Pokemon look hurt! Let me take you for a while! Wait, you're not Pokemon! You're a show for a child! Ah! What? How in the world? Pony Express. It's like they, they watched like an abridged series to get an understanding <laughs> of what Pokemon is. Been putting work in the lab, just made this pony deck. Twilight Sparkle, main protagonist of My Little Pony. Also, a whiny little bitch and a pony. <laughs> Are we in the final arc of this rap battle? And that's what they've pulled out of their ass. A whiny little bitch and a pony. Now hold on, before you, go, before you go any further, take a guess. Take a guess who's about to walk into this battle. Um, Digimon? Not quite. Okay, let's find out. All right. Listen up, Ash. Your rhymes are defective. Here, take this bomb. It's super effective. Pimpin' ain't easy, ponies, and I've never seen your show. But you've all got stripper names, so pony up the dough. Wait, so Meowth is a is a pimp? Yes, it's like a special it's like a special variant of Meowth in this battle where he's a pimp. I don't think this was a meme. It's just a thing they made up. Like, so they set up this whole thing where they were like, My Little Pony versus Pokemon. Pokemon's better. No, my little pony's better. I'm Meowth and I sell sex with other Pokemon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Meowth, I love blow! Do you think they knew anything about the shows before they made this? I don't know jack shit about My Little Pony. I don't know jack shit about Pokemon. And I feel like I've walked away knowing less about My Little Pony and knowing less about Pokemon. But the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, 
That rap battle actually proved to be a blessing in disguise, because it at least was totally consistent in its bizarre weirdness. The rest of these battles typically were just kind of boring until they dropped one inexplicably strange moment in your lap without preparation. Stepping on a Lego horse, we're soon walking on fire. I could go harder, but I'm not trying to screw a minor. What? <laughs> Honey, hold up! <laughs> Boy, can you step back a minute and run that one by me again? What did Chris Pratt just say to that, <laughs> to that computer boy? <laughs> One rap that I really wanted to like, but I ended up hating, was Doge vs. Hello Kitty. You know, Doge is an interesting character because he's been around a decade and he's constantly evolved to stay relevant, but he's still been fun, no matter what. And I really do like 2013 Doge because he's simple, but he gets across a wholesome, funny gimmick and they turned him into a racist caricature. Old Doge, new tricks, like shitty DJ, I make you into meow mix. Some muscles, much training, very fast. Doge like laser pointer, you chase but never catch. Maybe this is just me, but through all the years that I read, the old Comic Sans Broken English Doge comics, I always read them with like the voice of a child, or like the voice of a dog earnestly trying to talk for the first time. I never once read one of those comics and thought, I bet, I bet he's got an Asian voice. We should get a white guy to do an Asian voice and read these comics. Like, maybe this is a nitpick, okay? But there's so little stuff from 2013 that has aged well. And all I'm asking is you don't take the few wholesome things from that era and retroactively make them racist. Moving on to other Season 2 rap battles, we of course have to talk about the one that officially broke my mind. Batman versus Iron Man. You're the city's savior, you Gotham be kidding me. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I have to stop. <laughs> no, already, I'm done. I'm done. And <laughs> what got me was, you Gotham be kidding you me. You Gotham be kidding. Uh, that is such a terrible way to set the tone for this shit. I'm done. I can't. I can't. You're done. I mean, obviously, I have to, but what the <laughs> You Gotham be point. kidding me. Batman who's afraid of bats, that's sort of ironic. Sounds like you got the black lung. Are you smoking that chronic? That was that was the bit of my that was that landed on the bit of my brain that that analyzes internet material. <laughs> it's just <laughs> then there it goes. It's gone. <laughs> Legitimately, after that specific rap battle. I think I stopped processing these in real time. Even when Hippie would show me a battle that he said, quote, had really good parts, I would just watch the visuals go by and pray for the moment it was all over. The next to last rap battle that Animeme posted to their channel was Mike and Sully versus Rocket and Groot. And boy, howdy, is this rap insulting. One of the clever jokes they set up early in this one is that Groot is incapable of rapping because, you know, he's Groot. I am Groot, I am Groot, I am Groot. I got this chill. And that's like a solid joke, you laugh, and you kind of accept that Rocket is going to be pulling the weight in this one, and then they change their mind, and, and Groot raps anyways. I do all my haters, I'm a box office breaker, money grows on trees. No, <laughs> yep. come on, it they was it. so they funny. Couldn't, they, couldn't, they, couldn't, they, uh, they couldn't deal with it. They just have him not do his only defining characteristic? All in this rap, I'm blowing up Monster Zinc. Put your ashes in a blender, monster energy drink. <laughs> now, I just told you that that was the next to last rap battle posted to the Animeme channel. So I imagine you now expect that we're going to move on to the finale. 
But things are a little more complex than that, and there's a little bit of a mystery at the heart of this one. You see, like with the first season, the second run of anime rap battles cost a lot of money to create. By all accounts, even just keeping the animation running costs nearly 10 grand every single episode. And so to keep the show on the road, they needed sponsors. It was as simple as that. This time around, Nerdist and Official Comedy were not interested, and so they settled on the sponsor of Fullscreen. At the time, Fullscreen had a video platform where they would allow creators to upload content that would exist behind a paywall. And so the idea that both parties came up with was that rap videos would be released ahead of time behind this Fullscreen paywall, and then eventually they would then be posted to the Animeme channel. And the hope was obviously that people would be so pumped to see new Animeme rap battles that they would pay to see them ahead of time. Now, here is why that is notable. In total, 10 episodes of Anime Rap Battle Season 2 were produced and placed behind this paywall. But only 9 were ultimately posted to the Anime YouTube channel. The actual, canon, next to last episode was so embarrassing that they just never released it. To put that into context, a couple years before this, Animeme put out a video marketed around Anne Frank, the Holocaust victim, and they never once questioned that decision. So the people in charge of this channel said, hey, let's get that Anne Frank meme video out, but this $10,000 rap video? We need to hide this from the internet. And that video's name was One Direction versus Five Seconds of Summer. You'll forever be in our shadows like a total eclipse. We'll devour you like a plate of fish and vinegar chips. And go back to where you came from, bloody boomerang style. Now, here's why this battle is so embarrassing. First of all, neither of those bands are memes, and they're not really within the interest of people who would be into a meme rap battle series. Keep in mind, once again, that the fan base of this series was constantly asking for Dat Boy vs. Pepe, Dat Boy vs. Pepe, make Dat Boy vs. Pepe, and instead, the series was basically going to end on a battle of the boy bands. Your name is One Direction, which is weird, since you all go both wise. And the second reason this is embarrassing is that One Direction broke up in August 2015. And this video was originally going to come out in August 2016. It took them so long to turn this around that the band they were covering broke up 12 months before they finished it. But I am so happy that some fan went behind that paywall and got a copy of this video because oh my god, I love this rap battle. Bigger than Big Ben we are, the biggest thing since the Beatles. The Beatles. <laughs> British people don't say Beatles like, <laughs> like the Beatles me. did. <laughs> well, say it's a bottle in it. I'll have your lady going down under while you're curling up fatal. Oh, it's because they had to rhyme beetle with fetal. But it already rhymes. You made it rhyme less. Jack, darling, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be mean. Yeah. I love you. We are almost, almost at the end of the chaos. And when we get there, I am going to have a lot of words to say. But the final, final rap video that Animeme produced and put out came out in September 2016, and it was called the Animeme Rap Battle Royale. This little video had a few teams from across Season 2 enter an arena tournament to battle each other. Every time a new person enters, they kill the previous rapper, and after a while it all becomes white noise. Here's a bunch of random clips. We going mafia! You won't even see it coming! You a jackass, Steve, I'll be this bald hill call! I'm Professor Oak, bitch! I've got a tool belt, like Tim the Toolman Taylor. <laughs> I don't want to keep going. <laughs> there's a little I, bit more. There's like, there's like... Oh, a full quarter of this left, it can't get better. In the end, it seems like Batman is going to win. But then there is an explosion, and we see a new contender, Insanity Wolf. Remember him? I still don't. 
But because there is no one to battle, Insanity Wolf begins rapping against himself, causing a sequence where he dives further and further into his own mind until he's driven fully insane. And then, in the final shot, we're shown a revelation. It's done. <laughs> a si it was it was the it was that baby all along. You remember that that baby meme? No. It was him all along. He was behind all of it. What baby? What are you talking about? <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> the fucking mob boss baby or whatever. What are you talking about? <laughs> so Anime Rap Battles Season 2 was big enough of a success? Today, many of these videos approach 2 or 3 million views. Not as many as the first season, but enough to justify them continuing to try. But from what I can tell, the negative reaction to the series was so harsh that they just basically gave up on the idea after this. Within a month of the poor reception of that finale, Animeme basically immediately reverted to their original gimmick. Realistically simplistic animations of popular memes of the day. However, they would still try to integrate animations of dead memes that no one cares about. I'm guessing because they still had the files and they figured what the hell. At this stage in their existence, you could have popped over to the channel to see such hits as Donald Trump singing Despacito. Despacito, my rocket is so neato. Or maybe Kim Jong Un playing Despacito. Despacito, gonna blow you up with my rocket. And of course, Biden playing Despacito. Oh wait, that one was real. On occasion, they would release a video that would get all the way to a million views, but eventually, Animeme basically became an unofficial second channel for Yo Mama content. And at that stage, the views really started to slope off. About a month ago, they released an animated video called Chungus Among Us, one of their first videos in years, and it currently has 15,000 views. A meme video about Chungus in Among Us was basically dead on arrival. So, what's the big lesson that we should take away from all of this? Well, I think Animeme is a relic of a much more simple time. Back in the day, the internet moved so slow and the culture was so patient that you could realistically take a year off and animate a bunch of meme videos. And when you came back, you could almost certainly be assured that all of those memes would still be around. But nowadays, it's impossible for creators to keep up with the constantly swirling whirlpool of what's cool and what's cringe. And where Animeme ended up messing up was losing track of their original goal of turning around animated meme videos fast enough and realistically enough to still meet expectations. The idea that they spent three years animating the idea of what culture was in 2013 is just kind of silly. But here's the thing. If you go to the Yo Mama YouTube channel right now, you'll find that they do integrate memes into their content. They make Among Us jokes, they make Baby Nut jokes, so why are they still popular while Animeme is seen as somewhat of a failed experiment? Well, I think the distinction lies solely in branding. You see, Yo Mama is branded almost entirely around the character of Brody Fox, the human personification of all Yo Mama jokes. And the thing about Brody is that he's been around for 10 years, and he's probably going to be here in 20 years. Because no matter how much changes on this earth, no matter how much we step forwards or backwards as a species, there will always be a 12 year old on the playground who wants to insult his best friend and ends up looking up the phrase, Yo Mama Compilation. 
But the thing about building your brand 100% around current memes is that it's inevitable that those very memes are going to become outdated. When I look at the Animeme logo, I see a stale rage comic pogging into eternity. That meme is so old that I actually legitimately cannot remember what it originally was supposed to signify. And for the rest of eternity, when you look up Animeme, you're gonna see that face, and you're gonna see Insanity Wolf, and Pedo Bear, and a billion other things that have no role in the 2020s. And the tragic thing is that ineptitude didn't kill Animeme, mismanagement didn't kill Animeme, time killed Animeme. And time is going to be the thing that keeps it frozen a moment away from the ultimate YouTube goal for the rest of eternity. A big thanks again to our friends over at NordVPN. As a reminder, NordVPN is the best way to keep your data secure while also gaining a few perks along the way. Call it security with benefits. With Nord, you can hide your IP address from those hackers trying to steal your information, or maybe just watch that video that's blocked in your country. It's a fantastic service, and if you want to get a huge discount off of your first two years, then I strongly recommend going to nordvpn.com slash q-u-i-n-t-o-n, where you are going to find a special discount just for my fans. Plus, if you use the code QUINTIN at checkout, you're going to get an extra month entirely free. So once again, that's nordvpn.com slash q-u-i-n-t-o-n. Yeah, we can just skip around and every frame is just like so cursed. <laughs> it tells a new story. <laughs> it, just, it doesn't it hasn't stopped working yet. <laughs> if I just stop thinking about how this is supposed to be a fucking rap battle, every fucking subtitle is the funniest fucking shit. <laughs> this is fucking these are the funniest these are the funniest reaction images. These are the funniest yeah. reaction images ever. I've got a tool belt. <laughs> I'm crying. I'm crying. Oh my god, I'm broken out to a cold sweat. I have fucking I have tears. I had it's been a while since something just broke me, man. <laughs> just fuck. You know, it's been a good hot minute. <laughs> Before we go, I just want to send a big thanks to uh, Hippie Rat once again for helping me out with this one. Hippie seriously had a huge impact on this video, um, really inspired this one, and of course helped me out with the reactions. Also, a big thanks to my guest editor for this episode who took the reins so I could focus on iCarly. A big thanks to both of those people. Without them, this video probably would not have been possible, and they're both going to be in the description. So go ahead and go down there and, and check them out and give them both some love. Also, a big thanks to all my supporters on Patreon who helped proofread this and give some notes. If you want to support the channel further, consider checking me out on Patreon. Uh, I have a current Patreon goal where if we get to 1,025 Patreons, I'm going to make a video about Homestuck. And I know nothing about Homestuck, so imagine seeing me suffer down that rabbit hole. Wouldn't that be something you want to see? And finally, be sure to go down and hit subscribe. I have have uh, three more videos coming out before I Carly, and two of those are Fallen Titans, and I don't want you guys to miss any of this stuff, so please just make sure you're subscribed. Help us get to 500k. I love you all, and whenever I see that number go up, it just makes me feel so inspired to keep tracking along. With that, I've been Quentin Reviews, and that's all you need.